What's up guys, Kudokun here. As some of you probably know, today was supposed to be a stream day, but because there's some stuff going on in my personal life, I wasn't really in the mood to do a stream. I wanted to do something though, so since there's a bit of traction going on in the Dragon Ball Super card game on my channel, I wanted to do something Dragon Ball Super related, but I haven't really gotten any decks together because I haven't looked through all the cards, but I decided that a video like this would be a good starting point. Like I said before, I haven't built any concrete decks, but here's a list of 10 of the leader cards I'm looking at right now. I haven't played the game enough to know that these are the best, but they're the 10 that I have my eye on if I'm going to start making decks. And they're not in any particular order, so let's just get to the list. Chilled is the only yellow leader that I'm really that interested in. Chilled's effect is pretty sexy. Every time you attack with it, you get one 10,000 power token in play. That's actually a lot. To put that into perspective, that's 1-2 to two energies worth of a card that you get every turn, for free, that can attack right after this card because there's no summoning sickness, that doesn't do anything to your hand advantage, and because it's a 10,000 power token, it can take out your opponent's characters, or it can attack them for even more damage. 10,000 is just way too much power for these things to have. Another bonus is this card awakens at 6 life instead of 4. After Chilled Awakens, it keeps spawning tokens, but you also get to draw a card every time it attacks on top of it. Drawing cards isn't that unique, because a lot of Awakened cards get to do that, but the fact that this spawns the tokens and gets to draw cards is pretty lulzy. I guess the downside to this card mainly is the fact that it's a 10,000 during your opponent's turn, and it only gains the plus 5,000 boost during your turn. Most Awakened cards are just 15,000 all the time, so... If you see that as a downside, then I totally understand, but I still think this is a pretty good card, and again, really the only card in yellow that I would build around. Funnily enough, Beerus is actually my only blue card. It's not that blue sucks necessarily, or yellow for that matter, I guess just green and red are more my playstyle in this game. Anyways, Beerus has a pretty cool effect. If you have at least three energy charged, then every time you attack you can KO one of your opponent's two or less costing battle cards. This is a great way to shut down rush stacks and get rid of really tiny blockers. It's not super busted, but it doesn't cost you any hand or energy advantage, and it's just a really nice way to get rid of really cheap cards. It's awake inside though, is where the juicy stuff is. First of all, its auto effect gets better. When this attacks, you get to draw one card, just like Chilled, and also you can knock out one of your opponent's battle cards with three or less instead of two or less. Now, you might be noticing an effect that costs 16 energy. This 16 energy costs effect is, you win the game. That's right, your boy Beerus cannot be stalled against. If your opponent tries to stall the game, and you get 16 turns in, you win. Because of the way Beerus works, I guess you could also build a stall deck around him, where you stall out the game for 16 turns and then win, and there might be some cards that charge your energy a little bit faster. So, this card seems like a card that I want to keep my eyes on. Literally half of the list is green, so we'll just get red out of the way now and then get onto my green cards. But this first red is a doozy, and I won't be shocked to find out that this is probably the most powerful and most sought after card in the game. All of your Gokus and Vegetas in all areas of the game become red, blue, and green, so every color except for yellow. I understand why they didn't give them yellow, because if it was yellow it would be completely busted and they would probably have to nerf this. But anyways, if you've been playing card games for a while, I don't think I need to explain to you how powerful an effect that makes all of your energy cards, all of the colors, except for one, can be. This essentially gives you access to every card in every combo of three out of the four colors. So normally decks and colors have boss monsters and specific combos they can pull off, and this deck can, hypothetically, run any and all of them at the same time as long as they don't include yellow. This goes one step further in how good it is, and why it will continue to just get better as more sets come out. Goku and Vegeta aren't niche. It's not like all of your Tien and Yamshas and Chao Tzu's get red, blue, and green. No, this is Goku and Vegeta. They're the two main characters, they're the two most popular characters in the show, so as sets come out, more and even better Gokus and Vegeta's will continue to be released. Making a deck where you can viably run like 20 Gokus and Vegetas and have just the absolute best ones in the deck on top of whatever the best possible combos in the game are that don't include yellow is going to just get harder and harder and harder to balance around as the game goes on. 
I haven't looked at all the battle cards yet, but it might not seem that broken right now depending on what Gokus and Vegetas we have, but I promise you, just better ones will be released and they can be used as either powerful combos on their own or they can be used to charge some of the best combos in the game. If you can, I recommend trying to get your hands on one of these as early as possible because the problem's only going to get worse. This other effect is when this card attacks, you discard the top card of your deck, and if it's red, this gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. So getting a free 5,000 power boost is pretty nice, and it doesn't cost you any hand advantage, so it's pretty good. As you can probably imagine, its awaken side doesn't get any worse. Your carrots and veggies keep their battery status, while your attack move actually gets an upgrade. Now when you attack, you get to draw one card, like usual, and you don't have to discard the top card of your deck anymore, it's just if you have 10 or more discarded cards, this gets plus 5,000 power and also deals 2 damage instead of 1. 20,000 attacker, double strike, access to all the most powerful combos in the game. I will seriously be shocked if nobody uses or collects this card. Vados is pretty beautiful in her simplicity. For those of you who, for whatever reason, don't know this already, you can't attack a battle character unless it's already rested. That means if something hits you, you can hit it back, and you can keep certain characters safe by just choosing not to attack with them. But with Vados, you can't really choose to do that because it can kill it anyway. The most useful trick for Vados is going to be sniping blockers so that your actual big beefy dudes can get through. And for a card that's so cheap and easy to get, you can't really ask for much more. Her Awakened Side is about what you'd expect. It pretty much just makes it better at doing what it was already doing. You can draw an attack, and if you're attacking a battle character, it's a 20,000 instead of a 15. Again, for how cheap and easy the card is to get, it's pretty good. The last red card we'll be looking at is Hit, and I'm sure there are exactly zero people out there who are shocked that Hit has a pretty decent leader ability. Now his front side is actually not that bad. It's just you gain plus 5,000 power when you attack. Now that is not a horrible ability. It is completely fine but admittedly slightly underwhelming compared to some of the other cards that we've looked at. Its Awaken side, though, is pretty good. If your opponent tries to block your attack, you tell them no. You idiot, that card doesn't even have blocker. You take the damage. No, 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 shh, 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 shh. You take the damage. It just seems like such an oppressive game-winning card. If your opponent ever gets to a point where they only have one life left, then there's nothing that is going to stop you from going in for that one damage and just immediately winning the game. This seems like a good leader if you just want to finish the game off quickly before your opponent has a chance to react to you. Of course, it keeps the plus 5,000 power boost when it attacks, and you also get to draw one card. I'm going to clarify that there is a chance that somewhere in the advanced rules, it states that if a blocker for whatever reason isn't able to block anymore, you might be able to block with a different card. I'm like 80 to 90% sure that isn't the case because that doesn't seem like it would be the case in any other card game. Like if you declare that something is blocking and then that's just it, <laughs> it seems that it, like after you declare the blocker you can't just declare more blockers because one card only blocks one card. So if that one card you're blocking with loses the ability to block, I think you just miss out on the block altogether. Again, somebody in the comments, feel free to clarify for me, feel free to uh, link me to something that says otherwise, but I'm pretty sure this card just cannot be blocked. Moving on to the other half of the list, aka Green. We're just gonna get him out of the way, okay? We're gonna get the big bad Broly out of the way. Anybody who knows me and knows my interest in Dragon Ball knows that I love Broly to itty bitty pieces. He is one of my favorite characters in the show, probably one of my favorite villains in pretty much any anime. I know his motivations are stupid, but he's so cool. Anyways, all that being said, he's not really what I wanted him to be or expected him to be. I still get him, I still see where he could be very powerful, and I still want to make him work, but um, he's not really what I was expecting him to be. First of all, he has a debuff on him. He cannot attack battle cards no matter what. He has to attack the leader always. That's a bit limiting, I don't know if I really like that. I mean, I guess it makes sense with his personality, you know, he sort of just rages and goes after the leader for the win, instead of wasting his time with all the puny uh, battle cards, but I don't know, it seems like kind of a weird move. When he attacks, both players discard one card from their hands, and I get what they're going for here, it's sort of like a make them feel like they can't defend themselves sort of thing, because it'll give them less cards to block with from their hands. 
Like I said before, definitely something I can make work, although not necessarily what I was looking for. See, despite my tactical nature, when I play a card game, here's my mindset. I start off really strong, and I go, hey, do you have an answer for this? If you don't, I'm gonna build up momentum and kill you. I am an aggro player for life. I love getting in there quick, getting some kind of advantage, and then just making it impossible for my opponent to ever take that advantage away from me until they run out of stuff and die. And Broly's kind of not that. I was expecting him to be like a big bad brute that controlled the field, but he's not. He's more of a like chip away at your opponent slowly kind of thing. And we're going to make our boy Broly work, okay? Our boy Broly's going to get his own deck. Just you wait and see. I want to clarify that there's an extra card that makes it so that you don't lose a card from your hand from Broly's effect, so it's pretty much just your opponent only discards one card from their hand and you don't have to discard anything. So Broly's Awakened side, uh, it still can't attack battle cards, which sucks, but I get it. On top of both players discarding a card from their hands, they now also choose one of their in-play battle characters and discard it. One of the things that sucks about Broly's jewelry <laughs> is it doesn't actually stop you from having to discard battle characters, so that effect will be hitting you and your opponent. I mean, I like it, and I've already put a ring on it, but the ring doesn't even help that much anymore. I get it though, I get what they were going for. You build a defensive deck that sort of stalls out a little bit, your opponent eventually runs out of resources, and you go in for the kill. Um, I'm guessing you probably pair this with something that can bring itself back to life every turn so that you don't suffer from the discarding a battle character every turn so much. And that's it, okay? I get it, and we're gonna do it. Ah, Gohan. You know, there was a time where Gohan was actually my favorite character in the show, but Trunks and Broly, it just, it just kind of moved on. Gohan's front side actually kind of sucks. I mean, it's cool if you can pull it off. If you have more life than your opponent when you attack, you can draw one card, so you kind of get the awakened draw one card when you attack effect on your regular side if you can keep your uh, life up, but if you take more damage than your opponent at any point, you effectively don't have an effect. Luckily though, this Gohan card does make up for it on its other side. So on our Awakened side, we can draw one card when we attack. Okay, basic, basic. And for six energy, you just, you just kind of Wrath of God your opponent's entire field. There's no nuance, there's no tactic, there's no special strategy, there's nothing you have to set up. It's just your opponent no longer has a field. I mean, what else can he ask for, really? Granted, some of the most powerful cards in the game say that they can't be destroyed by card effects, but anything that doesn't have that specific effect is just nuked, <laughs> and your opponent has to start over from the beginning. You don't. It doesn't nuke both sides of the field, it's just your opponent's battle cards are all dead now. I don't feel like I need to explain this anymore. Next card. We're also going to look at the childhood Gohan, you know, the good one. Front side is pretty basic, you get 5,000 extra power if you have Sun Goku in your discard pile when you attack. Attacking at 15,000 is nice, nothing too crazy and nothing too weak. I'll admit, this card might actually not be the most competitive card that I'm looking at, but you can't deny that it might be the most intriguing. So when it attacks, you can draw a card, of course, and its second effect is, you can choose to remove your discard pile from the game to get 5,000 power and triple strike. Now let's not pretend that's not a powerful ability. It is. It doesn't cost any energy, it doesn't cost any hand advantage, and chances are you don't really need your drop zone at this point in the game anyway. If used at a very specific time, this is the game winning card. If you can put your opponent in a position where they will have to take this card's attack, then this effect can actually be pretty brutal. Now that being said, I'm sure your eyes have wandered to the bottom of the screen and you've noticed that there is a slight, itty bitty tiny drawback to using this effect. If you use this effect and end your turn, then you lose the game. Oh, talk about a final turn. Like I said before, for as simple as this effect sounds, it is legitimately a very powerful effect. Three cards is almost half of your opponent's life it's on a card that cannot be destroyed, and if you put your opponent in a position where they don't have many cards in their hands and they don't have any blockers, this is game. 
if you get experienced in the game and you start to understand what all the decks are capable of, then building around this might actually be very beneficial to you. Now of course there is a second drawback to this card, which is why you have to build around it, and that is it really doesn't have an effect until you use that final attack. So it pretty much just gets the one card draw, and then when you finally see an opening you can go in with the effect, but until then it might as well just be a vanilla. So I don't know, like I said before, this might not be one of the best cards on the list, in fact it might be down on the bottom as one of the worst, but I think it's interesting, and I think if I get a lot better at the game, I'm gonna want to build a deck around this. Our second to last card is going to be a Goku that is just as cheap, just as easy to get a hold of, and just as simple as Vados. This Goku has double attack, and that's it. There's, you don't have to discard a card from your hand, you don't have to discard the top card of your deck, you don't have to perform hand seals, you don't have to do anything to get this double strike effect. It sounds really simple, but honestly, for how simple it is, it's very, very devastating. To put this into perspective, double strike means you take two damage instead of one damage from your opponent when you attack their life. Since your opponent has eight life, your opponent has a four turn counter to figure out a way to deal with this card, or they lose the game. They lose the game in four turns if they just can't think of an immediate answer. Now obviously it doesn't have anything to power itself up, it is just an uncommon, but to be completely honest, if you don't really have an idea for who you want your leader to be, and you're just mainly focused on the deck building part of it and you don't want to think about a leader, this might be the best just throw in leader of all time. You don't have to work around a specific strategy, you don't have to worry about timings or combos or any of that. Devote your time and energy into building a decent deck and oh, by the way, your opponent has four turns to stop Goku or they lose the game. It's so perfect and beautiful and simple. Simple, like Goku. He awakens at four life just like many other cards. You still draw a card whenever you attack. And and guess what his effect is? <laughs> he still has double strike. Still no combos, still no special techniques or special timings you need to know. Deal with my deck. And also, my leader is going to take two life from you every turn if you can't do something about it, so... Mm, just simple, uncomplicated pressure. <sighs> God bless you, Goku. We're on to sell the last card we're going to look at today. Now I'm going to be completely transparent here. I know at the beginning I said this wasn't in any particular order, but I will be honest, this is the leader that I have my eyes set on right now. This is pretty much the playstyle that I wanted. I can apply some early game pressure, and then if they play something I can just push it to the side real quick with his effect, and then I can just apply more pressure. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Once per turn, you can take one card from your hand and put it underneath this card, and then choose one of your opponent's three or less energy cost cards and discard it. I shouldn't have to explain why that's so good. It's pretty good. The drawback, of course, is that you have to discard one card from your hand essentially to use it. Even though it's not going to the discard pile, it's going underneath cell. And you might be wondering, well, why is it going underneath your leader? That seems a little needlessly complicated. Ah, ah, just you wait. Ooh. Ooh, ultimate life form cell. It's like Bondi took all of my hopes and dreams and funneled them into a trading card. So first things first, cell doesn't draw a card every time he attacks like the other characters do, but once per turn you can put one card from your hand underneath this card to draw two more. So you're still kind of getting the plus one by cycling a card from your hand, which is better in my opinion. But kudo, why do we keep putting our cards underneath our leader? Your second effect, also once per turn, you discard two cards from underneath Cell to choose one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. Oh, I, I don't really feel like dealing with that card. Deleted. It's so perfect. It's just a very simple snipe a card that you don't like effect. So if your opponent does play some high level bullcrap that you don't really feel like dealing with, you just, you snipe it and now it's gone. And since you can use both of these effects during the same turn, then you can guarantee at least one dead card every other turn. There are some drawbacks. Uh, I can see this deck being walled out very easily. If your opponent has cards that can't be insta-killed, then obviously those are going to be a problem because you don't have any way to really power yourself up. 
But of course, just in building the deck, you can find a way to overcome that. Also, you're going to be losing hand advantage a lot in the beginning of the game, because if you're taking one card and putting it in the energy, and then taking another card and putting it underneath cell, it's going to run you out really quick. The way I'm guessing you're supposed to build the deck is you build it in a way that you don't have very high energy cost cards, so what you do is you play a bunch of cheap cards to let you draw, so that you don't even have to play cards in the energy really that often, you can just put all of your cards underneath cell to snipe your opponent's field, and then just sort of zergling rush them. I'll do some experimentation, but I know there's a way I can make this card work, and I think this card is going to be my main. I'm sorry Broly. I'll try and put some cards in here that represent you anyways, even if it's not the leader. Ooh, we're finally done. Again guys, sorry again for the whole not streaming thing. Uh, like I said before, there's just sort of some stuff that's going on in my personal life and it made me not really want to get on camera. But I hope a video makes up for it a little bit. And making the video made me feel a little bit better, so that's good. Catch you guys next time. Hopefully the next time we see each other, I'll be talking about an actual deck profile. Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!